My name is Dr. Maria Giroux and I'm an obstetrics and gynecology resident at the University of Saskatchewan. The OBGYN Academy has created a series of videos about COVID-19. In this video, we're going to talk about COVID-19 in pregnancy. There's very little research about COVID-19 in pregnancy. There were 18 women who were infected in the later half of their pregnancy. And what the researchers found was that women who had COVID-19 during pregnancy did not have any more severe illness than women who were not pregnant who were infected with COVID-19 uh, and they were the same age. So there's no evidence that pregnant women are at increased risk of having worse uh, illness than women who are not pregnant. There's a separate video that has been posted about treatment of COVID-19. How can this treatment be modified to somebody who's pregnant? So it is important to involve an entire team, so to use a multidisciplinary approach. So this team includes obstetrics, high-risk obstetrics, so that's maternal fetal medicine, it includes NICU, and if necessary, ICU and anesthesia. It is important for the patient who is affected by COVID-19 to self-isolate and to screen for any other infections such as influenza that can also cause breathing problems. It is important for you to seek medical care if you develop any chest pain, shortness of breath, or confusion, or have any problems related to your pregnancy. If somebody has quite a severe illness or if they have any complications or any problems with pregnancy, they may need to be admitted to the hospital. While in hospital, the woman would be monitored for any signs of worsening breathing problems and any signs of preterm labor, such as uterine contractions. And the baby would also be monitored in terms of heart rate and growth. If the woman um, has worsening breathing problems, she may need to be admitted to ICU um, to be placed on a mechanical ventilator, so it's a machine that helps um, the woman breathe. Pregnancy outcomes have been generally good and it really depends on how sick the mother is and whether the baby needs to be delivered early. There is no evidence that COVID-19 is transmitted from mom to baby, so there is no evidence of vertical transmission. There's also no evidence of birth defects, and most babies who are born to mothers who are infected with COVID-19 do generally well. The most common complications include preterm birth. What we know is that um, the women who have COVID-19 are more likely to have a cesarean section, and this is because if mom is not getting a lot of oxygen because there is breathing difficulties, then baby may not get as much oxygen and then the heart rate may become abnormal, which can result in a cesarean section. Other Complications uh, during pregnancy for a woman who has COVID-19 would be getting hospitalized, uh, needing a machine to help with breathing, so needing to be put on mechanical ventilator. And the rest of the complications um, I already talked about in a separate video in the signs and symptoms video. The time of delivery uh, really depends on the patient. So for example, the uh, woman who's, um, who's very healthy otherwise who has mild COVID-19, her timing of delivery may be very different than somebody who's very sick admitted to the hospital who also has pregnancy complications. So the diagnosis of COVID itself is not an indication to start labor or to uh, induce labor or to have a delivery. The pregnancy is managed by an obstetrician and it's important to deliver in the hospital rather than at home because of the need for monitoring because of an increased risk of having a caesarean section. During labor, it's important to monitor um, mother's oxygen saturation, maternal vital signs, so making sure that the heart rate is good, blood pressure is good. And the woman can have an epidural uh, and she may be given an early epidural Caesarean section is done for uh, obstetrical reasons, so COVID-19 itself is not a reason to have a caesarean section. However, we know that women with COVID-19 are at increased risk of having a caesarean section. After the baby is born, the baby can have skin-to-skin -skin contact and delayed cord clamping. So there's no need to cut the cord early unless that's really necessary. And the baby is tested after birth for COVID-19. 
there's no need to separate mom and baby unless it's really necessary. It's important for uh, a new mom to wash her hands and make sure that you always wash your hands before touching baby. Um, a woman can still breastfeed, so there's no uh, evidence right now to this date that the virus gets transmitted from mom to baby through breast milk, but it's important to wash hands before touching baby, wash hands before touching bottle, um, and to wear a mask while breastfeeding. The postpartum visit can be done either through video conferencing or telephone or in person. However, if the visit is done in person, it may be wise to leave baby at home to decrease any risk of exposure to COVID-19 or other infections.